Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Chrono Plays Old Ass Games. Today, I am taking a look at the Bandai Pippin. You may also know it as the Apple Pippin, or the Pippin at Mark, or the Pippin at World. Why did it have so many names? Well, back in 1996, Bandai released a console built on top of Apple's Pippin platform that they dubbed the Atmark. It was the Japanese version of the console, whereas the US version of the console was the At World, spelled with the At symbol at the beginning. So it gets a little bit confusing, thus everybody just calls it the Pippin. And it fits because Apple's Pippin platform didn't really succeed and kind of only exists on the Pippin at Mark and at World, so just calling it the Pippin console works. So let's take a look at this thing. It is a hefty console, obviously designed to be sat under the TV and left there. On the front, we have our two controller ports. We have a headphone jack and the power light. This inset piece here is the CD tray. On top, we have a full set of CD controls since this was designed to be an independent CD player. So basically you could plug it into your stereo and just play CDs from it. A Little bit overpowered for a CD player, but uh, well, it wasn't really designed to be only a CD player. That just was one of its features. So on the top, we have the power button. We have a play pause button, a stop button, volume control for the headphones, forward and back for the CD controls, and an eject button. It's not really much on the sides of the console. On the bottom, we have two expansion ports. One looks to me like a PCI port, so it was probably designed to sit on top of another component that was probably never actually made. But uh, they did that a lot for consoles, like the uh, Famicom CD tray or the original design for the Nintendo PlayStation. Hmm. The other port I find kind of an interesting port yeah, because the cover doesn't come off. That, to me, looks like an old-fashioned memory port. And I did read something about it, an accessory called the Pippin Memory. So I'm thinking that there was actually a memory card that you could plug in here to slightly upgrade the Pippin. Click. Now the back I find the most interesting it is very open, basically. We have a standard power cable, which means that the power supply itself is built into the machine. We have a 15 pin VGA port. We have an S video out port, composite video out, left, right, audio out, left, right, audio in, a serial port for a printer, a serial port for a modem, and what I find the most interesting is that little black switch right there can switch between VGA, NTSC, and PAL. So you could pretty much use this world around, which is really cool. So here I've got it set up with our standard Emerson TV little bit newer than it really needed to be. The, this Emerson was created in 2005, whereas the Pippin was released in 1996. So a few years difference. But let's start this thing up and see what we get. As, is, has, as has become tradition for me, I like turning on the console with nothing in the drive to see what it does, see if it does something interesting. So here we go. It says Pippin in a child's voice, which is a little creepy. And then it pops up the Pippin logo. Not exactly a fast thing. And it sounds like the fan might be a little iffy. So basically that's all it shows. It just shows a example of a very actually poor example looking at it, uh, that's not a very good uh, drawing of the Pippin. And I don't know how many people go to put in a CD. I 
I've noticed it does that too. It doesn't like opening the tray. I wonder if that's because it's broken or if there's a piece of software in there that's doing a thing. But anyways, I don't know how many people take a CD and they put it in like this when it's obviously designed to be put down. So yes, interesting. So let's take a look at some of the software that came with it. Now, I did point out that the Pippin Atmark was the Japanese version of the console. It just said Pippin again for some reason. Hmm. I've never left it sit there this long, so I have no idea what it's doing. Anyways, um, as I said, the Atmark was the Japanese version of the console. That's the version we have. We don't have the At World version, which is the U.S. version. From my understanding, that's significantly rarer. Even though Apple is a U.S. company, Bandai is a Japanese company, so they obviously focused on the Japanese market. So the software that I have is in another language. I mean, yes, okay, it says Pippin Title CD-ROM Catalog, but as you can see here and here, it's in another language. So let's fire this thing up. Oop, come here. There we go. This is, like I said, just the catalog. Uh, boop. Ugh. Caught on the cable there. And it just said pip again. So I put the CD in. It should notice here in a moment. This is not a terribly fast uh, device. I think it's her I read it runs on a uh, 66 megahertz uh, power PC processor. Um, I mean, it was, it was a fifth generation console, so it was going up against the likes of the Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64, and those didn't have a lot of power associated with them. And this guy is running a slimmed down version of the Macintosh operating system. So it's doing just a little bit more than the PlayStation and the N64. Pippin Atmark, advanced technology something or other. I think it said Apple computers from Apple computers. Title CD-ROM catalog. I love how this is all in English so far. And that is totally not. I mean, I see that kind of often. I don't understand it. It, it, why is a lot of what's in Japan in English and a lot also in Japanese and it's like interchangeable? I don't, I really don't understand it. It's kind of weird. Whoop. Then we have this joy of a controller here. This is the Apple Jack controller from what they call it. It's this really bo weird boomerang shaped thing. We have a D-pad here. We have three buttons down here. We have four buttons here. We have two shoulder pads. And then the weirdest thing, a trackball. This is actually a trackball, and it controls the mouse. Whee! That you might be able to see. Yeah, you should be able to see that. And it's just a little weird. All right, so we have something in another language that I have no idea what it is. Internet kit. Curio City. Frankly... Frankie Online for Pippin. Uh, you can go back and or forward and backwards. More things in languages that I don't understand. I love how you click a shoulder button for uh, right click and left click. It's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can, I don't know, understand some of this stuff. I think this is, like I said, this is just a catalog. So this is pretty much it. This is all it shows. You know, it's playing some, you know, catalog music in the background, but uh, this is pretty much all it shows. And what's really interesting, you can see that this is the internet kit, and that very much looks like a browser in extremely low resolution because it's a tiny screen and it's a freaking 480 TV. Um, but the Pippin was advertised as an internet-ready console in 1995. I'm going to point this out. I was very, very early to the internet. Not the earliest, obviously, but I was very, very early to the internet. I started surfing the web in 1994, okay? The internet didn't really start picking up until 95. And, yeah, it, it really... 
it was nowhere near what it is today. Today, it's basically just a thing, a part of everybody's daily life, at least those people that can actually have it. But uh, back then, this was, it wasn't exactly a selling point to have an internet-ready console. But they did it to the point where it came with a 14.4 modem. And no, I don't mean 14 megabit per second. I mean 14 kilobit per second. This is a standard dial-up modem, which is always really interesting. I love these things. I would connect it to the internet, but I don't know of any ISP that still does dial-up. I'm sure they exist. I just don't know of any. Um, And I have no idea if a modern ISP that does do dial-up can support 14.4. Because 14.4 is really low end. Uh, anything lower than that, you're measured in BOD. At least I don't think anything. Yeah, I don't. I, I think it was like 900 BOD and then 14.4. I don't know. I don't know. That's not my area of expertise. I do consoles. I don't do computers. But yeah, so this is the catalog in another language. And it does nothing but be a catalog. That's literally all it does. Yeah. Get out of that. We do have other software for it, but it's mostly internet software, and it's primarily in Japanese, so I have no idea what any of it actually does or how to use it. There's software that you have to use to be able to set up your ISP to get it to dial out. Um, There's browsing software. It all comes on CDs, and it's a little weird. A bit weird anyways. I mean, it makes sense that, you know, it would do this. But considering this is built on top of a version of Macintosh, you would think this would be built into the internal OS, not on CD. Yeah, I I, I don't understand it. Uh, I'm going to guess that there's not really a lot of storage, so they couldn't put that kind of interface on the internal storage. But it could store the connection information just the connection information but not the interface to set the connection information that's why you needed to do it with cd but that's a guess i don't actually know hmm anyways let's move on to some software that i can actually tell what the hell is going on kind of bandai digital entertainment with saban can you guess what's coming Power Rangers Zio. Yeah, it's not exactly easy to find software for this console. Uh, There were less than 80 games made for it in the Japanese market, and there was a grand spanking total of 18 games made for it in the U.S. market. So obviously it wasn't a terribly popular console selling a grand spanking total of 42,000 units. Um, So finding stuff for it is kind of hard. We kind of had to improvise a bit, and we... We could only go with what we could find, so we have Power Rangers Zio, and in my opinion, this is a terrible, terrible game. Of course, you use the uh, trackball, for reasons I never understood, to do a thing that the D-pad could do just as easily. I don't get it. Um, So yeah, I want to... Let's just start a new game. And... You probably can't hear this because, well, one, I'm talking, and two, it's really, really quiet, and I don't have anything set up to record this thing. But basically, there's a uh, Zordon wannabe talking at me, uh, talking about the Emperor of the Machine Army or whatever the fuck that's trying to screw over the Earth. You know, basically, it's a standard Power Rangers plot. So basically, he's trying to give us a uh, basic uh, plot to uh, do things. Can I skip this? Because I really don't care. No, I appear not to be able to skip this. Push. Oh, I pushed the button. There we go. Okay. Please select a ranger. So you get the five rangers. And apparently the sixth one's blocked out for right now, which is okay. Uh, Well, let's go with the red one. Ranger info. I think I clicked it. Oh, no. Now I clicked it. Weapon, sword, red ranger, Zeo Ranger 5. 
At least I think that's what it's supposed to say. Zeo Ranger V. I don't know. The intelligent and strong leader of the Zeo Rangers, he has special training in biohazard emergencies. Okie dokie. Oh, I think it selected something else for me. I think it lost its selection. That's weird. Loading, 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 loading. You know, I would say that you would think that people would have games associated with a loading screen, but I know that's actually patented and people can't. All right, so this is the game. So it's a street brawler kind of game with shitty ass reaction time. So I push the button, push the button. It's just really crappy, slow reaction time. Push over, it has to, you know, the character basically stands up and then starts walking. So it's got really shitty reaction time, really, really slow. Um, and the controls are really weird. I was gonna say, I should be able to jump higher. Yeah. Get 50% for weapon. Oh, I have 1%. So if I just push the jump button, it jumps that high and walks backwards. But if I push up and jump, he jumps higher and walks backwards. Hmm. So he's out for a stroll and he comes up against these things, which will perpetually kick my ass because the controls are so bad that I can't... There's no... Ugh. Whoa, what? How did, what, what? Punching doesn't seem to do shit. Get 100% to fight boss. Uh, apparently, I got another one of these red things. Hmm. Uh, jump. Wee. Can I punch the... No, I can't punch the fire hydrant. Or kick the fire hydrant. I like how if I just keep kicking, I walk backwards. That's... I don't know, this is weird. But yeah, these controls are terrible. As I said, punching doesn't seem to do shit. And apparently the AI understands that too, because it primarily only kick as well. Whoop. Can I jump up there? Because there's an up arrow. Apparently not. Hmm. There's a guy up there. Pfft, what the hell? I think this should be an Ashen's book of terrible old games you've probably never heard of. Ugh. Actually, it might be. I don't think I'm that far in that book. <laughs> uh, this is actually the farthest I've ever made it in this game so far because this game is just that terrible. Fell down. He jumps up. Oh, I didn't kick him in midair this time. There we go. Do I have like different? Yes, I have different move sets dependent on which button I'm pushing at the time. We. What if I down and punch has this little weak little jab kind of thing? Up and punch does this roundhouse punch thing. That's a little weird. Interesting. But there's no way to actually use that functionality. Because this isn't a well-designed fighting game. This is a poorly designed street fighting game. Street brawler. And I like how he's just out for a stroll. When he's walking around, he's just out for a stroll. Come on. Come on. Let me hit him. There we go. And then get close and then hit him on the way back down. Whee. Urgh. Oh, come on. <laughs> and that's pretty much how the game is played. You try to kick each other and fail miserably. Oh, he stayed up. There we go. Yeah, enough of that crap. I'm done. Can I exit out? Yeah, there's a back button. Oh, wow. It's like a pause button. Neat. All right, exit game. Exit game. There we go. 
quit. Now, here's another game that I'm just as terrible at, but I have the belief that it's not because of the game being bad, as is the case in Power Rangers Zeo, but because I'm so used to modern day games and the controls associated with them that I can't actually play this thing properly. This is Marathon, a game by Bungie. Now, you might recognize the name of name Bungie because they created the insanely popular Halo series. Yes, Halo was originally designed to work on a Mac. Hmm. Anyways, so we have Marathon and Marathon 2, which I don't fully know the difference. I don't think they're direct sequels. I don't think Marathon 2 is a sequel of Marathon. I think it's a remake of Marathon, specifically for the Pippin. Um... I'm not 100% sure. Well, let's go with Marathon 2. I'm just showing this off. I'm not digging deep into the game itself. Marathon 2 Durandal? What is Durandal? I have no idea. All right, so begin new game, continue save. Well, I don't have a save. Preferences, delete save game, and quit. So begin new game. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. L H apostrophe O W O N point one. Boop. <laughs> Loading times. Yay. Okay, so we have. I don't know this. It's it's a shooter type game that I can never get the hang of the controls. So it starts you out in this environment where there's a bunch of people that kill a bunch of other people and they teleport away. Yeah, I, I don't understand it. I don't know the plot. This is shockingly like Doom. Uh, in fact, it looks to be based off of Doom. But uh, it has the old Doom controller. So if you go left, you, you push left, you actually turn left. Push right, you turn right. Forward, you walk forward. Back, you walk back. And the two shoulder buttons are strafing. Uh, I cannot control the game like that anymore. I'm so used to Wasad keys and the mouse that controlling controlling it like this, like old school games, old school Doom, is just almost impossible for me anymore. Um, so let's see. Blue and yellow are fire. Yes. Green is probably activate, and red is I don't know. So, boop, I picked up a thing. I don't know what the thing was, but I picked up a thing. The problem, I think, that I have with this game that I'm just now realizing is that I can't walk forward and turn at the same time. I try to, it just continues to walk forward, and if I push hard enough to the left... He'll turn. He'll stop and turn left. I think that's my problem. It's like I walk forward, and I want to turn left. He'll stop and turn left. He won't walk around the corner. He has to walk out and then turn, which is obviously a terrible, terrible thing. And I have to have... The way I play games, I have to be able to move in at least three different directions simultaneously. So I'll be walking forward, then walking at a diagonal... So this way, and then strafing around an opponent so I can actually circle the opponent. Um, and I can't do that in this game. The controls are incredibly limited. And they could have used the, the touch or the trackball here to control the uh, pointer, but uh, I don't think they invented that concept yet. At least back then. Uh, boop. Boop. But yes, it is shockingly like Doom, the original Doom. You know, Wolfenstein, Doom, that kind of thing. Has definitely a different artistic style than Doom. And I'm trying to decide if it's higher resolution than Doom or not. They seem to be more details in here, so it might be higher res. Of course, when was Doom created? Like 85 or something like that? And this was... Uh, I mean, the, the console was 96, so I would assume it's better better than or, or original Doom. 
Whee! And yes, I kind of floated over the water there. And of course, here we get our first uh, actual enemies that I can't aim. Just like most consoles, I cannot play first-person shooter on a console. But come on, even modern-day consoles with twin sticks are easier to control than this thing. Oh my god. Yuck. How far we have come. Yeah, I'm so used to being able to walk and turn at the same time. Though I would point out, I think Doom, you could walk and turn at the same time. I think that's part of my problem. What are these green things? Are they teleporters? No, they're just lights. Okay. Whoa, what the hell are you? Apparently you're an imp. <laughs> that's what it sounds like anyways. Whee! Whoa, something's shooting at me. I thought something was shooting at me. Apparently not. But I don't remember seeing those things on the floor there, so I think they teleported in, maybe? Your uh, allies at the, from the beginning of the game might still be trying to help you. Hmm. All right, that's enough of that. My thumb's starting to hurt from trying to push the button. So that was the Apple Bandai Pippin at Mark. Went up against the likes of the Sony PlayStation and the Nintendo 64 and did not succeed for obvious reasons. It was an interesting concept, but it was a failure of the concept. Actually kind of screwed over Bandai pretty seriously. Um, but yeah. So I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun. And hope that your controls are good.